You never know how much you really believe anything until its truth or falsehood becomes a matter of life and death to you. This is a quote from C.S. Lewis, one of the greatest Christian writers and philosophers of our time. If you haven't read anything by him, I would highly suggest it. He wrote a book called The Screwtape Letters, and it changed my life at a very young age. Now, never more has this quote been true than earlier today. I really didn't think we were going to find somebody who would have the ability to stand up and reclaim the language like Chanel Rion did earlier today. Some of you might have seen it. Earlier today, I put up about a four-minute video of her talking about this idea of using the word division or divisive as a pejorative, meaning negative. It isn't always. In fact, in most cases, biblically, in the Christian life, the division and the separation is the entire point. Unity with the insane is a death sentence. Now, I'm not going to go through that whole video with you. You can go watch it. It's a Florida Mikey channel. But it's the basic fundamental idea of PSYOPs. When you let them choose the language and say, this is bad, this is good, and then try to have an argument with them, they're going to have already won because they're controlling the narrative. I guess if you could sum up, give me division. Second Corinthians talks about this. Come out from among them and be ye separate. How many of you raised kids and told them, look, there are certain kinds of people you just can't be around. If you're around the, this kind of person, you're going to end up in trouble. You're going to end up with problems. Division is a good thing. It defines us. But some people don't catch it. It was an incredible four minutes. It's a ba definitely a battlefield of the mind prerequisite. Watch that video. And how she absolutely tears apart the left and their games. And they're basically their psyops. Now, once again, as always, Florida Maki Patreon channel, that's what we dedicate all the videos there to. Psychological Operations 101. Get control of your mind before you decide to feel anything. And if you're listening to information that shouldn't make you feel anything, but it does, you're probably the victim of a PSYOP. And it has a lot to do with the 24 cognitive biases, the 24 logical fallacies. We're going to talk about one today here that doesn't get talked about a lot because it's a hard thing for a lot of people to wrap their mind around. Now, one US dollar, that's it per month at the Patreon channel. One dollar a month. If you would like it for less than a dollar a month, sign up for a whole year. And if after three months it's not for you, all three dollars right back at you. Fully refundable. First 90 days. No questions asked. Now, anytime, and this is a, this is a, a pro tip here. Anytime you hear anybody talking about what should be, that's something called the moral imperative. We should live in a world where no kid goes hungry. But what do we know the truth is? That's never going to be. You can try all you want to stamp out world hunger, but it's always going to find a way to rear its ugly head somewhere. We should live in a world without the fear of nuclear weapons, but we, you know, it's moral imperative stuff, idealism, and it's a trap. Now, a great example of this, <coughs> pardon me, a great example of this came to mind based on something we talked about yesterday, and this is a question I'm going to put to everybody out there. Now, everybody knows the pain at the grocery store. Everything's a lot more expensive. Everything's a lot harder to buy. People are scraping dimes and cutting coupons and BOGOs and all this kind of stuff. Now, this is terrible for Joe Biden. But it's great news for Donald Trump. 
Now, I'm not saying Donald Trump wished bad on anyone or um, Joe Biden intentionally. Some might say he, he might have intentionally done this. I don't know why he would. It's a political death sentence. But let me ask you the question. Let me ask you the question. If you were the person in charge of the prices at the grocery store and you knew that the more painful you made it, the more likely it was that Donald Trump was going to win in November. If you had the ability to lower prices, knowing that that might actually help Joe Biden, would you still keep prices high because of the moral imperative, the bigger argument? Saying, you know, yeah, our costs are down, but boy, if we start dropping prices, people might not be as mad as at Joe Biden in November as they are now. So if I can just keep my prices up and maybe raise them a little bit, just for the next six months, the moral imperative tells me that the bigger moral argument is to get rid of Joe Biden and put Donald Trump back in. Now, what's the right thing? Do you lower the prices when you can to help out your friends and neighbors? <coughs> Sorry about that. Or do you, which is the right thing? By lowering the prices, you might help Joe Biden in the polls. What would be the right thing to do? Now, in that context, I know we get a lot of butthurt people about this. I'm going to bring this topic up again. There's also, I used to care what people thought about me until one day I tried to pay my bills with their opinions. Of course, talking about the meteoric rise of the platform OnlyFans, which is basically spicy content from mostly um, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant women, 18 to about 60 in North America. The huge amount of wealth transfer that is occurring from overseas to that group of people based on something that they, you ready for this? Morally shouldn't be doing. And we shouldn't live in a world, we shouldn't live in a world where women have to do this. Well, we shouldn't live in a world where they have to do it. Or should we not live in a world where it's even possible? See, that's that fine line. What if, for example, this lady you know and she was having a hard time financially decided, you know what, there's this guy, he's been chasing me for years. I don't really love the guy, but he's good with money. Things are getting rough, and I'm not sure the, you know, you know what the next year or two is going to hold. Maybe I'll just marry up with him. Now, is that morally the right thing to do? <coughs> no, of course it's not, but... It happens. It happens and people do it. You see, but it's that word should. There's what actually happens and what should or should not happen. People all over the country facing all sorts of problems. They are one bad decision away, one big bill away, one car breakdown away from living in a tent. And they're doing what they have to do. You see, right and wrong gets really cloudy. I mean, not not in paper, on paper. There's a lot of folks out there that on paper can say, the Bible says this, the Bible says that, the Bible says the other. Yeah, it does. It does, but there's also reality to deal with. I mean, are you really going to take the chance? Are you going to take the chance on going to live in a homeless shelter? Here's another great example I used. It was over Patreon, I think. But I think it applies here now. Moms, and I guess dads too. When you talk to your kids about things they can and can't do, like, for example, upper right, mom says, I just made this really great, wonderful cake, and it's loaded with chocolate, and I know it smells really good, but it's for a party we're having tomorrow, so don't touch it. Don't. You know, go anywhere near it. Okay, you'll be in trouble if you do. It's for a party. 
Okay, and we know what kids are like when desserts are around the house. Now, you also tell your kid, okay, don't watch pornography. Now, all the kid knows, all the kid knows is that if I touch the chocolate cake, I get in trouble. If I get caught watching pornography, I'm, I'm in trouble. They don't differentiate the trouble. Both things are just wrong. And that's where I think a lot of adults have left themselves. Now, you know that while finding the cake with a piece missing would be a giant annoyance, it wouldn't be anywhere near, it wouldn't rise anywhere near to the level if you caught your kid, especially one at that age, watching pornography. But you can't explain that, can you, to the kid? There's just action and consequence. And that's all that, that's going on. When you have a family and you say, I'm going to do whatever I need to do to feed my family. And I'm going to do whatever I need to put food on the table. Keep a household going together. That's what you do. Because that's, going back to it, the bigger moral imperative is that kids have shoes on their feet and books for school and clothes to wear and dentist appointments and all that kind of stuff is a far bigger moral argument than what you may have to do to get the money to make that happen. Which brings us all the way back to here. You see, you never really know how much you believe anything until it's truth or falsehood becomes a matter of life and death. And we're almost there. <clears throat> we are in this country. There's going to be a lot of folks that are going to be put in a position where what they think, the right and the wrong, it's going to be a matter of life and death, survival or not surviving. So, once again, Chanel Rion. I hope I pronounced your name right. Um, C-H-A-N-L. C-H-A-N-E-L space R-I-O-N. Chanel Rion. Her four minutes, honest to God, absolutely nails it about reclaiming the language and saying, right now, division is a good thing. Give me division. I'll take division today, tomorrow, and forever when the other option is unity with the insane. And that's what national unity would be right now. This is Battlefield of the Mind stuff, guys. This is why I'm here on YouTube. If you'd like to join us over Patreon, get really read up on this stuff, love to have you. The dollar a month makes a huge difference in my life, more so than what you know. There's a lot of you out there I know that have signed up, and you can attest to it. It's life-changing stuff. So I will leave it there. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.